so this is Miss Mandy. She came to us as a transfer from another rescue, so really don't have a good history on her. Uh, she is 25 plus based on her teeth. She's had an old accident of some form. She is blind in her left eye. Her ear literally is bent around like cartilage damage. She's got an old wound on her nose. It didn't heal smoothly, so it's a little just hump of skin there on that part of it. But um, she had a little colic episode on Saturday. Now colic, most horse owners panic. Colic can be somewhere as simple as, I got a little tummy ache, my belly's rumbling, to life-threatening, intestines are twisted around, cutting off blood supply, you're at death, you know, that way. So colic is a very broad term in a horse, but you always take it serious, but with a little bit of banamine, uh, pain medicine, a little bit of sedation, she settled down fine, didn't seem to have any other issues. So, but we've been kind of watching her and I noticed when I got here on Monday that she really wasn't uh, pooping a whole lot. So that was a red flag. So yesterday I checked her out and she was still passing manure. And I was like, well, let's put her on some just alfalfa to loosen her stool, see what happens that way. Nah, she's still, so I brought her in this morning. Her heart rate was up. Um, gut sounds were decreased on the left side, increased on the right side, which is out of normal limits. So I sedated her and I palpated her and I was pulling out what manure there was there. It literally had worms. So, and again, being the scientific nerds that we are, of course we saved them, you know. Uh, but we have definitely, there's actually, that one is a tapeworm as well. So again, worms can cause a horse to colic. Now this may be an incidental finding that she's just not been wormed in a while. So right now I can't tell you if these are the cause of the colic or we're just finding them and we need to take care of that issue. She only got uh, officially transferred over on Friday. So we, of course, are only Monday through Thursday. So she hadn't had any official intake, deworming, things like that. And we also are doing a fecal looking for, uh, of course, worm eggs, because if we've got adult worms, guaranteed we're gonna have eggs. So being the nerds we are, we just, while we can, we're gonna do everything we can. She's also a little stocked up on her left hind leg. So we're gonna get some x-rays while we have her in here. And again, we're technically starting part of her intake process today with this while we're working up her medical issue at the same time. So, cause we would go ahead and examine the stocked up for a lameness exam, but we'll get the x-rays while she's sedated and makes it easy all at one time on that. I found at least two different species of eggs. Now this one, when I've done it with the cover slip, I have a lot of air bubbles, so I've got to look closely to not count air bubbles. And again, we just done a really quick one. We didn't do a very, quote, scientific, because we know she has worms. The worms could be the primary reason why she colicked, or it could be an incidental finding also. So at this point, I can't tell you which one is which, which came first, chicken or the egg, but we're gonna deal with it regardless, so. I am double looking, I'm just taking another look at our worms to see if I can identify the exact species of strongyls. And without a dissecting microscope, we're not probably going to be able to, but it's definitely a strongyls. So that's what we thought, but again, good confirmation. I was trying again if we could have a good example that I could compare to the book to show you all, but I don't, so that's okay. I was trying to show you, but we do have strongyls by no doubt and a tapeworm as well of adults. So, worms. So we're gonna put those back in our little vial to keep for prosperity for teaching examples. They're in alcohol right now, so that's why they're not moving. Strongyls is just a type of worm. Yeah, yeah, strongyls, yeah. Yeah, it's just one of the types of worms that can infect horses. I'm just reviewing the x-rays they have taken to see what good or bad's in there. So it's one of those we'll just flip through, see if there's anything major that will change my long-term prognosis on her. Because if we find another major issue that's a quality of life issue, then we'll take that into account as well. Again, given her age, things of that nature. So we kind of look at the whole big picture. And the reason we do that is 
our ultimate goal is their long-term quality of life. Now, if this was a horse on the farm, our only focus would be the colic right away. She's still new, we've not done intake on her, so we're getting a better idea of her all the way around. So if there's a major quality of life issue, that will definitely change the way I treat her because there's no reason to put her through a colic if I have another major issue that's gonna just take her down a month from now. So again, that's the benefit of having all of our diagnostics here. We can go through everything and make the best long-term decisions for these poor horses. This one you can actually, as a cool factor, you can see the tracheal cartilage rings right down through there. So that's just one of those cool factors while we're looking to point it out a few things. But the cartilage is C-shaped so it doesn't collapse. So it's not completely all the way around, but gives it a little, holds its shape. And again, we take lots of different views while we have the opportunity because sometimes you find things you're completely not aware of. Okay, these are the spinous processes, so I'm just kind of looking, zooming in on them. So we definitely have an issue here with her um, spinous processes, because you notice this one is more concave shaped than the others. So this has got a this is a little pinch point essentially. So you got that's one of these little things like that. And this one's really close together, but you can definitely see where this one is dipped in to a that pinch point. A yeah, it's giving her some issue. Yeah. <gasps> What's that? Oh, Ooh, that's no. bad juju. You want another x-ray of her withers? Those are her withers. Yes, her yes. If you can, let me finish flipping through these and we'll definitely redo the withers. This is not what I want to see. So this would be the bottom of her jaw. This would be her mandibular teeth. This would be her maxillary, her upper teeth. And this is what we call a little bit of a hook there on the front on that premolar. So we can easily grind that off with the power float. But the most important thing is, notice there's this nice big hump here, and this one where it's wore down has got the defect on the top. That is just another good example of wave mouth, which means they've not wore evenly top and bottom that way. So definitely some um, dental pathology there. Not unexpected though with, with one her age, but just a good finding. Because again, I hadn't reached in to feel, and I like my fingers, please. So usually when you hold the horse's tongue out the side of their mouth, they usually don't bite herself. She's a little more bitey, but when I go in there and feel, and I literally went in along the bottom of her teeth, and you can feel that hump in there. That's when she's like, oh, I want to bite my tongue and bite your fingers. So you see I pulled out really quickly. So she doesn't like her mouth mess with. Multiple, multiple medical issues to deal with, so. We'll take a few more x-rays. We're going to redo the withers because those concern me a lot for uh, quality of life that way. So we'll, we will see that and then we will put it all together and make a decision. Yeah, you can definitely tell these should be fairly smooth along the top and you can see this one's got the little irregular where there's been damage before. We got a little calcification in here. So she's definitely had an injury to her withers, which will be painful, knock her out, uh, definitely as a riding horse. I mean, there's no, she's not gonna be ridden. Even, even if age wasn't a factor, if she was five years old like that, that would be detrimental for riding at that point. So, um, she has that, we have dental issues, we have a colic. Sweetheart, things are not looking good long-term. So this is one of those that it's easy to second guess, quarterback it, however you want to on, you know, the reason why some decisions are made, but taking into account the fact that she is 25 years old, she is in the middle of a colic, she has multiple issues. She does like the, whoever um, donated that, that is a wonderful little treat thing to kind of calm a horse while you're doing farrier work that way. Um, we have damaged withers for quality of life issues. Uh, dental issues we could fix, we could float those. So that's the least on the priority list that way. But long term, she's not gonna have good quality of life with the issues she already has of pain, things like that. Her presenting symptom is colic, but for here, we gotta look at the whole long term is if I pull her through the colic, is she painful that we're gonna end up putting her down a month or two down the road that way? So 
My decision today is I am not going to try to pull her through this little colic episode, even though it's not a major one, because I have found enough other underlying issues that I know if we keep her around a few months, those quality of life issues are just going to show themselves more and more to me. So, uh, and for me personally, I would rather have a horse go out on a better note than being painful, getting run down, things of that nature of I'm completely behind letting animals have a good passing and not hanging on to them until they're too far gone. So, so I'm, that's going to be my decision. I know some people might be like, oh no, you shouldn't do that. But I'm looking at her overall long term, a month, two months down the road too. So, and again, my job is to look out for the best thing for the horses and that's what I'm taking into account is all those issues. Now, if we hadn't found any of those issues, yeah, we would go ahead and work on pulling her through the colic. But there's enough underlying that long term, we're not doing her any favors. So, and I'm not gonna make her have the pain issues, things like that. Cause again, she's a brand new horse to us. So, you know, she just didn't come in and we put her down cause she was old. There's other issues that we've looked through and um, again, long term, that's her best, her best kindness we can do to her is that. So give her the last act of kindness and let her go out on a good note, enjoying some treats, some grain, and that way before things get worse. So Mandy came to us as a transfer from another rescue and majority of the time when we get those transfers, they do have other issues that they haven't been able to find um, adoptable homes for or medical management of, things like that. So anytime we get one like that, you know, we know there's more likely to be other issues, which is again, why we, while we had her pulled in here for the colic, we dug deeper and deeper. So we found things quicker of why she was having issues, why she wasn't getting adopted out. Uh, yeah, she's had a previous injury at some point in time, but, uh, and that may be where those withers came from, whatever happened. I mean, it's hard to say what happened to her, but she probably took a lot of trauma with the nature, especially her ear being so bent with the cartilage. So she had a pretty traumatic event, whatever that was. Now, how long ago? We have no clue. So, but again, a lot of times we get the ones that the other rescues can't adopt out, can't fix, and they come to us. And again, we do uh, do what's best for the horse in the end. As we were finishing up Mandy, uh, we got a photo sent of Miss Hoppy, one of her Mustangs. And um, the other day she had scraped above her eye, superficial, nothing that we needed to put any sutures in. But apparently as it's been healing, as you know, when you get um, scabs and stuff, you know, and you, they get itchy as they're healing wounds. So it looks like uh, it was uh, itchy on her and she has roughed up a little bit of skin. So I've got my trusty suture box with our essential small wound care supplies. And we're going to go take a look at Miss Hoppy as a follow up for her previous little bumped her head above her eye. So over the weekend when I was feeding, I noticed that Hopi had busted her eye. Um, it looks like a puncture wound kind of on top of it. So we're gonna pull her in and Dr. Nancy is going to sedate her and get that cleaned up. That way we could see exactly what's going on and see what we need to do for her. You're good. Cause this is really our first official introduction, sweetheart. So let's right. make it a nice one. Good girl. Now, look at that. We're still alive. Aren't we, sweetheart? So, uh, we're just gonna take a closer look where she bumped her head over the weekend right above her eye. The eye itself appears to be clear, no damage to it. I just wanna take a closer hands-on feel just to make certain that it's just a little minor surface wound and that we'll be good with just a little bit of TLC on top, so. You can trigger. If she was calmer, we would do more scrubbing up and all that, but where she's more nervous, we'll treat her like in the wild. We'll keep an eye on it, but it's all superficial. There we go. That's a good girl, okay? Now, we'll watch that. 
but you can be a wild Mustang and let it heal in. It will keep an eye on it, okay? Yeah. It's okay. Just chill. Just chill. You're good. It's not the end of the world. I promise you. There's worse things out there. Touching your scab. Good thing is, it's just a little bit the scab. I'm just cleaning it up with a little bit of chlorhexidine right now. What I've done is, where she had scuffed her head last week, we had just watched it. We looked at it, we pulled her in. I have to look and see what day right off the top of my head. I can't remember the exact day, but we had pulled her in, looked at it. Yeah, so last Monday. So, yeah, you were the weekend child too. You're like, I like to do things on the weekend. So just topical treatment, but again, she had a little bit of crusted scab over it, knocked loose today, and still too superficial to really need a suture in there. But I'm going to get Mr. Corey a little stuff to treat you topically until that heals in completely, darling. And I'm just pulling loose all the little crusties along the way, but we'll treat that just as a true superficial, because again, it literally was just a top layer, so. Okay, darling. Well, we took a look at Hoppy, and again, last Saturday she had bumped her eye fine, all superficial, didn't need stitches. She just had a little bit of crusty scab there. It knocked loose. I went ahead and uh, removed it, cleaned it up good, and we're just going to treat it topically because, again, it is so shallow. There's no need for stitches, so we'll just let it heal in on its own with Hoppy being her lovely self.